From ancient treasures to forgotten ruins, this video is going to take you on a thrilling journey into the world of archaeology, showcasing some of the most fascinating discoveries made by archaeologists, and in some cases, by non-archaeologists who got the shocks of their lives when they came across their surprising finds. Get ready to uncover the secrets of the past and experience the excitement of unearthing history. One of only two rare 17th century maps of Australia has been restored and is now on display for the first time. Created by Dutch cartographer Joan Blau in 1659, the map was believed lost until being found in storage in an attic in Sweden in 2010. Now known as Archipelagos Orientalis, which translates into English as Eastern Archipelago. The map was sold at auction by an anonymous seller and acquired by Australia's National Library for an estimated $600,000 in 2013. After a few years of restoration, it's been on display in the library's Treasures Gallery since mid-2018. The map is understood to have been drawn based on a sighting of Tasmania by Abel Tasman's crew aboard the Zee of 1642, and was the most current reflection of Australia at the time of its creation before the template was changed after Captain Cook explored the East Coast in 1770. Experts think that it was intended to be a decorative piece more than a serious map, and was most likely handed to a government official as a diplomatic gift. Notably, the map refers to Australia as Nova Hollandia, or New Holland. The bogs of Langstrup in North Zeeland, Denmark, yielded one of the country's most incredible discoveries from the Bronze Age. This is a discovery from a very long time ago. In 1879, while cutting peat in the bog, a servant stumbled upon a treasure trove that included the largest and most perfect belt plate from the Bronze Age ever seen at the time. Along with a knife with a beautifully decorated handle and two large bronze spiral rings. The artifacts were nearly tossed away as useless junk, but fortunately someone persuaded the farmer who owned the land to sell them to an antique shop rather than dump them. The objects were later bought by the National Museum, by which time the precise original location of the discovery had been forgotten. The belt plate from Langstrup is now recognized as a true Danish Bronze Age icon and is even featured on the 200 krona banknote. The names of the owner of the farmland and the servant who made the discovery have vanished into the sands of time, adding a layer of mystery and intrigue to this incredible find. Behold, the magnificent Lion of Mari, a copper statue that was discovered in 1936 by the French archaeologist André Perrault at the appropriately named Temple of Lions in Mari, Syria. The statue, which is believed to date back to the early 2nd millennium BCE, has been damaged over time, with only the anterior part of the body remaining intact. It's currently housed in the Near Eastern Antiquities Department of the Louvre, where visitors can admire its beauty and marvel at its rich history. The Temple of the Lions, where the Lion of Mari was found, was built around 2150 BCE by the Shakanaku governor of Mari named Ishtup Ilum. The statue was likely produced as a protome, possibly during the reign of Zimri Lim between 1775 to 1761 BCE, when the temple was being rebuilt. The Temple of Lions was known as the Temple of Dragon when Paro excavated it, but today it's known as Tel Hariri. The original piece is now in the Louvre in Paris, France. There's supposed to be a replica of it in the National Museum of Aleppo, but we regret to say that the replica is a very poor match for the original. In September 2020, construction workers in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, were hard at work at the site of a new water pumping station when they stumbled across an ancient stone lion. The stone beast was broken into two pieces when it was found and had been buried deep. When the workers came across it, they were more than 12 feet below street level. It's possible that the lion is connected to the nearby Wat Phnom Temple, as it's similar in design to the lion statues that guard the temple's main stupa and pagoda. But there's a problem with that theory. The temple doesn't appear to be missing any statues. And even if it were, this one is far bigger. Historians in Cambodia have speculated that there was once a large religious structure next to the temple, but the building was destroyed long ago, and the lion statue was buried. 
The temple was built in 1372, so it's likely that the lion was made around the same time. But as it's so difficult for scientists to pinpoint the age of stone artifacts, there's no way of knowing. In a fascinating discovery, archaeologists from Södertorn University have found two silver denarii coins from the Roman period on the uninhabited island of Gotska Sandun, Sweden, in April 2023. The coins feature the images of the Emperors Trajan and Antoninus Pius. While the Roman Empire had contact with Svealand, the part of the world we know today as central Sweden, during this period, there are no historical records of their voyages to Gutskasanden, leaving the source of the coins a mystery. One possibility is that the coins may have come from a shipwreck off the coast of the island, where numerous remnants of ancient fireplaces and hearths have been discovered. Further investigation is required to determine whether these hearths belong to a settlement or whether they were merely a temporary camp set up by ancient people who were in the area to produce sea oil. Finds of Roman silver coins aren't uncommon in Gotland. However, their discovery on Gotska Sanden has raised many questions for researchers. The team even suggests that these finds could be a crucial piece of evidence for a previously undiscovered Roman trading network in Svealand. The coins are now being studied by experts to gain more insights into their origin and significance. Next up, we have the Agusan image, also known as the Golden Tara of the Philippines. It's a 21-carat golden statue of a female Hindu or Buddhist deity, and it was discovered in 1917 on the banks of the Wawa River in Mindanoa, the Philippines. The identity of the goddess has been debated since its discovery, with some scholars suggesting it represents a Hindu Sivyate goddess, while others believe it represents a Buddhist Tara. One thing that makes identifying the goddess difficult is that the goldsmiths who made the statue seem to have intentionally left out specific iconographic attributes for unknown reasons. Despite this, a recent study suggests that the image represents the offering goddess Vajralasya of the Tantric Buddhist tradition. The Agasan image is now on display at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, but its ownership has been a source of conflict between Filipinos and Americans for many years. Some Filipino scholars have demanded its return, arguing that it's a national treasure of the country that was removed from the Philippines illegally. While the Field Museum has said that it may return the golden image if requested by the Philippine government, the repatriation of the figurine remains a contentious issue. In April 2023, archaeologists discovered two ancient Nabataean altars on the seabed of Pazzioli, a southern Italian town that was once a bustling commercial port called Putioli. The altars, which date back to the first half of the first century, are similar to a larger altar that was found in the same area in 1965. The base of the larger altar bears the inscription, Dusari Sacrum, meaning sacred to Dusares the head deity of the Nabataean pantheon. The votive niches on the top of the altar slabs originally held betels, which were sacred stones venerated as effigies of the gods. Unlike many other religions, the traditional Nabataean religion did not have figural representations of the gods. Instead, the gods were represented by cultic stella, or standing stones. A colossal bust of Dushara, the head of the Nabataean pantheon, has previously been discovered in Pazzuoli and is now in the Vatican Museums. By the time the bust was made, his image had become fully Romano-Hellenized, and he was depicted as a man with a thick curly beard, similar to Zeus. These altars bring the total number of Nabataean altar slabs and bases found in this area to five since the first was discovered in the 18th century. The Gebel Sheikh Suleiman relief is an intriguing ancient Egyptian artifact that dates back to around 3000 BCE, during the late pre-dynastic period of Egypt. It was discovered in an area near Buhen at the Second Cataract on the west bank of the Nile in Egypt, which is considered one of the earliest frontiers in human history. This early example of low-relief carving is believed to describe a battle between the Egyptians and the A-group Nubian people, with the Egyptian king depicted as victorious, although his name isn't given. 
The relief is inscribed on a large sandstone block and is now housed in the National Museum of Sudan. The boat seen in the relief is believed to represent the nameless king, who shone dominating the defeated Nubians. Additionally, a second inscription was found nearby that features a large scorpion with bound captives and is thought to be slightly older and related to King Scorpion II. This incredible artifact sheds light on the early interactions between the Egyptians and Nubians. It's incredible to think about the stories and history preserved in this ancient piece of art. The Gudea cylinders are a fascinating archaeological discovery that shed light on Sumerian history and mythology. These two terracotta cylinders, created by or for the ruler of Lagash Gudea somewhere around 2125 BCE, feature the longest known text in the Sumerian language. They were found in 1877 during excavations at Tela, formerly known as Gursu in Iraq, by Ernest de Sarzac, and are now displayed in the Louvre Museum in Paris. The cylinders are inscribed with a Sumerian myth called the building of Ningirsu's temple, written in cuneiform script. They were found in a drain next to the Agaran building, which was described on a brick pillar found nearby as a place of judgment. Rather than being discarded on purpose, the artifacts are thought to have fallen into the drain during the destruction of Gursu generations after they were made. They've been studied and translated by numerous scholars over the years, including Francois Throdangen, Ira Maurice Price, and Samuel Noah Kramer. It's been proposed that the text of the cylinders may have been part of a ritual play or enactment performed during yearly temple dedication festivities, but we'll probably never know for sure. In 1922, during digging work ahead of the installation of new sewer pipes in Dagenham, England, a small wooden statue was discovered in the marshland on the banks of the River Thames. This 18-inch tall statue, known as the Dagenham Idol, is made of Scots pine and is carbon dated to around 2250 BCE, making it one of the oldest examples of human representation ever found in Europe. The Dagenham Idol has no arms, but has two legs with straight markings cut across them, hips and buttocks narrowing to a waist and then broadening to shoulders and a rounded head. The statue has a hole in the pubic region that could indicate that it represents the female form, but it's instead believed that the insertion of a now lost phallic peg in the hole would make it male. The statue was found buried in a layer of peat about 10 feet below ground level, along with a deer skeleton, possibly as a votive fertility sacrifice. The original Dagenham idol is now housed at Colchester Castle Museum, while a copy can be found at the Museum of London. Life for infants was a lot harder in the ancient world than it is now. Only a third of babies born during the Bronze Age lived through their first year. And even then, two-thirds of them would pass away before becoming adults. That doesn't mean that their parents were neglectful or uncaring, though. In fact, if experts are right about the purpose of these ornate drinking vessels, they weren't totally dissimilar to the parents of today. These cute cups have been found all over Germany, and analysis of their contents has proven that they once contained the milk of a variety of domesticated animals. The oldest of the cups found to date is 3,200 years old. It's believed that the animal designs were intended to make the cups more attractive to children and therefore encourage them to drink their milk. They might even have doubled up as toys. The people of the time would have had no way to pasteurize their milk, so drinking it was dangerous, but they couldn't have known that. Similar designs can be seen in the baby bottles of the 21st century. This Iron Age bark shield was found in 2019 near Enderby, a town southwest of Leicester, UK. While bark bowls and boxes from this period have been found in the past, this is the first bark shield ever discovered. The shield was made between 395 and 255 BCE and was crafted from alder, willow, poplar, hazel, or spindle bark. It was stiffened with strips of apple, pear, quince, or hawthorn wood and had a woven boss that protected its handle. The shield's exterior featured a checkerboard pattern in red mineral paint. The archaeologists responsible for the discovery found the shield on farmland in a watering hole used by Iron Age and Roman communities. They don't know why it was at the bottom of the pit, but believe it may have been thrown away or placed there as part of a ritual. 
The shield was damaged, and researchers are still trying to determine whether it was pierced by spears during battle or some other way. Despite the shield's uniqueness as an archaeological find, it probably wasn't the only one of its kind ever made. Researchers have found that bark shields, while not as strong as wood or metal, were still tough enough to withstand stabs from blades and arrows. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon!